One of the things we want to do next is give you some buying advice so that if you're out poking around and you're looking for a vehicle to restore, even if it's not as old as this 56, that you're going to have some idea of what to look for. So Brent, let's talk about your body. I mean, this body first. And uh, I know you've got some ideas to help people get on the right road. Yeah. And then, and back up just a little bit, depending on how much money you have to spend and how much work you want to do, that's going to determine where you're going to start. Uh, the more money you spend, obviously, the less work you need to do. Um, it, it all just depends on what you want to end up with as far as, as a finished product. Um, but some of the things to look for, body work wise, if you're not comfortable with doing any kind of body work, you want to look for straight and, and uh, finished body, as minimal rust as you can possibly get, obviously, because rust is what's going to kill these cars. So one of the tricks is we'll actually sight down the fenders and look, see how straight it is, because if they're a little bit wavy, that's an indication that there's been some body work done to it. Whether or not it's good or bad, you don't know uh, until you actually start stripping paint now, off. And is that to say, it's not necessary to say that wavy is bad. No, not necessarily. Because it's, it's just, gonna, again, it's, we're, there are a lot of variables here depending on what your standards are right. for what you want as a finished product and how far you're willing to go to repair those waves if you want a dead laser straight line front to back. Yep, exactly. And it's just, and it's time and, and plastic filler. And I mean, it's just time, money, one of the two. So, or both. Or both. Yeah. Sometimes it is both. <laughs> so anyway, look down the side, see if it's, see if it's wavy, see if you can see any spots that are going to need to be repaired. Factor that into the amount of time or mon amount of money that you're going to have to spend to fix it. And another thing, take a magnet uh, and just stick it to the car. If there's good steel there, the magnet's going to stick. Um, if you get into a spot where there's a lot of plastic filler, the magnet won't even stick to it. Um, and that could be buried under paint and look okay. It might look great. Now again, plastic filler's maybe not bad, but you're just looking for your awareness of what's been done to it before. It, yep, absolutely. It all depends on, again, what you want to end up with. So if it's really bad and you think you want a show car, then you're going to need to plan on cutting that panel or whatever, cutting that panel out and replacing it or replacing the fender, however far you want to go with it. So. Body work wise, I mean, you can hide a lot of things under primer, you can hide a lot of things under paint. Um, mechanically wise, uh, if it's got an engine and transmission in it, do you care? Are you, gonna, are you planning on using it? If you are, then look for oil leaks. Obviously, 1956, if it's an original engine, you're going to have some oil leaks, so take that into consideration. Check the suspension out, see if you can wiggle it back and forth. And if you're, you know, I mean, if you wiggle it up and down, uh, if the shocks are decent, Look at the shocks, look at the frame, see how rusted it is. There's just a, there's a lot of things. What you're really doing is you're starting to make a checklist for yourself of, all right, I, how much work on the body, how much work on the engine, how much work on the tranny, how much work on the suspension, because the checklist is leading you to a price tag. Right, and depending on how much money you've got to spend, if you've got X amount and it's going to cost you this much to do all those repairs and you're going to exceed that amount. So you have to back up the price of the original car accordingly to try and stay within your budget. Now what about this idea of, um, I know for this one it, it's going to be pretty easy to get parts for it. We've mentioned the wiring harness already and that yep. was an, an internet order. Um, but it seems prudent to, as you're looking at the car and you start to make a list of what it's going to need to do some preemptive shopping and see what you can get, where you can get it, and what it's going to cost. Because yep. not every vehicle out there, some of the more exotic stuff, little harder, which means a little more dough right. to get those parts. And that's basically what it is, again, is it, there's parts for almost everything. And if they can't be found, you know, just laying around somewhere, somebody could probably make them for you, but it's going to cost. Try five Chevys, the 55, 56, 57 Chevy. There's a lot of aftermarket parts. We could rebuild this car from front to back um, out of a catalog. So this is a really good candidate for, for buying parts. Uh, some of the other ones, yeah, they're, they're hard to find. You can find them but they do get hard and they get pricey. Now the interior stuff, we know the headliner in the carpet shot in this one, so yep. same thing there, give it a visual and, yeah. and yep. add those items to your list as you need to. Yep, absolutely, how far is it? I mean, how far do you wanna take it? If the interior is okay and you wanna drive it that way, drive it that way. All right, well it's, you know, it's a little bit nebulous, but the answer is a little bit nebulous because it, it, Brent keeps saying it's gonna depend on how much dough you wanna spend, right. how much time you wanna spend, and so it's, it's hard for us to focus you in completely, but treat this restore vehicle the way you would treat any used vehicle that you are gonna try to buy. Take it for a ride if you can. If you can't, 
figure that into the price, figure on worst case scenario, worst case because if you right. can't run the engine and the transmission, you have no idea what you got. Well, and there's always, if you're not comfortable looking at a car, I mean, assessing the mechanical uh, status of the car, there's always, you could take it to a mechanic, you could take it to a body man, somebody that knows cars. To, to just give you a, you know an idea and it's of what worth it's a little be. bit of money you got to give them to if, get an expert opinion on what you've got in yeah front. if you don't know what you're looking at it is for sure that's that's great advice right there